I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and uh, let's talk about the eye patch. Several months ago, I noticed I was starting to have trouble with my vision. Uh, I, my vision was drifting in and out of focus. I was becoming quite sensitive to bright lights and dark areas. I was causing headaches, dizziness, all kinds of stuff. Now, I used to have very, very poor vision. I was very short-sighted. I had to wear glasses from about the age of three up until I was about 21. Uh, at which point I got laser eye surgery. Uh, in addition to the extreme short-sightedness, my retinas were slowly peeling off, and so I needed eye surgery to repair that and to uh, fix the short-sightedness. Otherwise, I would have gone blind. Now, uh, when, my, when I got the eye surgery, I was told that my vision would eventually start degrading again. So when I was noticing all these vision problems, I assumed that was it. I tried just a very simple trick of covering each eye um, separately to see if it was a problem in both eyes, and it turned out the problem was just the left eye. Now, I assumed that this was just my eyesight degrading again after the surgery, so I went to an optometrist to get my vision checked, um, assuming I'd just be going home with a pair of glasses. But it turns out that there was a late setting complication from my eye surgery that has caused my cornea in my right eye to become thin and that thinning has caused it to be pulled into a cone shape rather than a, uh, a spherical shape. And that has impacted my vision quite drastically. It's a condition called keratoconus. In the early stages of keratoconus, this can be corrected with glasses or contact lenses, but my condition is too far advanced. Um, there is no way of correcting the vision short of a cornea transplant, as far as I know. And so, because the, um, the poor vision in that eye was causing me dizziness and headaches, um, Now, you may not be aware of this, but people have dominant eyes, just like you have a dominant hand. Um, if you're at rest or not really doing anything particularly engaging, your brain will focus on the vision from one eye instead of both eyes together. Now, as it happens, my dominant eye is my right eye, and so if I'm sitting still for too long or if I get very tired, my right eye takes over in my vision, and because my right eye's vision is terrible, that causes me some trouble. I'm also in dark rooms, like there's a room at work that's very dark, but has some bright LEDs hidden here and there, and uh, that causes me headaches with the, the light sensitivity. I don't think the, um, I don't think the right eye can as adapt to the darkness as fast as the left? I'm not sure what it is, but it was giving me dreadful headaches, making me feel very nauseous. Um, I honestly several times felt like I just couldn't continue the workday. I did anyway, because I'm an idiot, but I felt like I couldn't. Um, so, that is why I made myself an eye patch. And whenever I'm having trouble with my right eye, I wear the eye patch so it can't interfere with the vision from my left eye anymore. I know there's concerns, health concerns, with wearing an eye patch. Um, I know that wearing one that is right up against your eyeball can cause glaucoma and other things like that, which is why I have specifically designed this eye patch. Um, my eye is open under the patch. It's completely open. Um, I can, like, kind of see the back of the patch. And if I cover this eye, I can see my nose. And I can see my finger doing this. 
That's all I can see out of the right eye. I, I did that by taking a rounded lens from a pair of skiing goggles and they are the, they make up that makes up the core of this eye patch. So it's a concave shape. It rests on my eyebrow and my cheekbone. It doesn't make contact with my eyeball at all. So don't worry about the health concerns of wearing the eye patch. I I have it sorted. I didn't design it this way because of that. I designed it this way because I knew having a patch right up against my eyeball would be uncomfortable. But hey, it, it solved both problems, so wonderful. I guess I'm making this video because I want to make it clear that if you see me in videos or on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that, wearing an eye patch, I'm not wearing it as costume. This is a disability aid. I will be making other eye patches that will fit various different aesthetics that I can use to match with costumes for various LARP characters and the like, but they are disability aids that have been made to match a costume. They are not costume. I just want to make that very, very clear. <sighs> now, uh, questions. Um, no, I know my eyeball looks perfectly fine. You can't tell there's anything wrong with it without advanced equipment. I had to put my head in at least six different machines to get this diagnosis. Yes, I have gotten a second opinion. I've gone to two different optometrists. I should be seeing an ophthalm ophthalmologist soon to uh, discuss treatment. Um, keratoconus, once it has set into one eye, will usually spread to the second eye. Um, it we should be in time to prevent my left eye going bad as well. There is a treatment called um, corneal cross-linking where they have a collagen solution they can soak into your eye and that can help prevent it from worsening. So I'm going to be looking into getting that done as soon as possible. I'd, ra I'd rather not go entirely blunt. I only wear the eye patch sometimes, only wear it when I need it. I try to avoid wearing it while I'm out walking on the roads and that kind of thing because I feel like crap peripheral vision is better than no peripheral vision in terms of road safety. Trouble with the eye patch. Um, well, wearing an eye patch uh, is supposed to cause problems with spatial relations, coordination and balance but I have had a lifetime of dyspraxia, which affects all of those things, and so far have noticed no additional problems. It may just because I'm so well practiced. Uh, eye patches are actually quite common for people who have keratoconus, as I've recently discovered. Um, I, I actually Google to check myself. Uh, most people wear them for the light sensitivity, but I find just the, the bad just the bad vision and my brain constantly going, no, we're gonna look through the right eyeball now, is is more than enough reason to wear one. Um, especially when I'm tired. When I'm tired, it just decides, yeah, no, we're going with the right eyeball. eyeball and I, I can't. <sighs> yes, I do get people annoying me with, oh, why aren't you wearing your eye patch now? Is it just a costume? It's like, no, it's not. It's only, it only affects me sometimes, I only need to wear it sometimes. Luckily, everyone at work has been great. My boss has been great about it. Nobody, like, that I work with minds. It's just, sometimes visitors can be a bit annoying. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, keratoconus. I guess I'm now visibly disabled, as well as invisibly. Get it? Visibly disabled? Because because it's my vision. It's it's my vision that's that's been disabled. Y you get it? Do you get it? Those of you who don't live here in Ireland may not be aware of direct provision. Now direct provision is a stain on Ireland, politically and socially. Direct provision is the segregation and mistreatment of those seeking asylum and refuge in Ireland 
in conditions that are not humane and not acceptable. Uh, this system of dealing with and processing refugees needs replacing, not improving, replacing with something better. There are people who are protesting direct provision because they want no refugees at all coming into Ireland, and I am not one of those people. I believe that refugees are welcome and should be welcome in this country, but that the system we currently have in place is inadequate and racist. So, I'm going to do something about it, or at least what little I can. I've seen the work of H. Bomber Guy and Ali from Philosophy Tube in doing live streams to raise money for their charities, Mermaids and Samaritans, respectively. I want to raise money for an organization that fights direct provision to replace it with something better. I haven't decided which uh, organization I'm going to be raising money for just yet. It will be I either Our Table or the Movement of Asylum Seekers Ireland. One of those two will be getting the money. So what I intend to do to raise this money is to do a live stream of me reading out the entirety of Anton Boculi along with the Ray of Schelte, the backstories. Now Anton Boculi, or the Cattle Raid of Cooley, or just the Ton, is one of the epics of Ireland. It would be, say, the Irish equivalent of the Iliad, the, the Odyssey, or Beowulf. I estimate it's going to take me about two days to read out, uh, factoring in breaks and things. On those breaks, if people are willing, I'd like to have some people read out some of their favorite stories, maybe, as part of the stream. Now, I know my audience is small, and my reach is limited. So, the goal I'm setting for this is small. I'm looking to raise about 500 euro. And when I'm going to do this is November 12th. I think we'll be starting around about 3 o'clock. Now, uh, we're going to be doing this on Twitch. I, I will set up the Twitch channel soon. Because I don't have one, because I'm not a gamer. <laughs> um, I am going to need help running the Twitch, so if anyone would like to do that, please please get in contact with me. All of my links and stuff are on the channel and you're in the thing. You, 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 you'll, it's, it, I'm easy to contact. It's fine. It's fine. My platform is small, but it exists. And I feel a responsibility to use that platform to fight injustice in whatever way I can. And this is the way I see for me to be able to do it. This is the way I see my platform as being useful for this. Now, obviously, because my audience is small now, I won't be able to raise as much as as H Bomber Guy or Philosophy Tube. But when it grows and I have more people, I'll probably do stuff like this again. Maybe one day I'll do the entire Ulster cycle, including the Tawn, and that might take me about a week. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I just want to live up to the responsibility that having a platform gives to me. I've already scheduled some time off work. I've scheduled the day before and a day after as well, just so don't worry, I will have plenty of rest before I get back to work and, and before I get started into it. I'll be fine. I've, I've thought about the logistics already. Or at least that side of the logistics. But yes, that's, that's everything. Live stream, 12th November, starting 3 p.m., Reading out the entirety of Anton Bocouli and the Ray of Schelte. I guess it's going to take me about two days. If anyone wants to help run the Twitch, please volunteer to do so. I'm going to need uh, help with a Discord server for that as well. And if anyone wants to volunteer to read some of their favorite stories so that I can take a break now and then, I'd love that too. Alright, thank you all for listening. Goodbye.